The two warring factions in Sudan have agreed to a three-day ceasefire. This comes as Western, Arab and Asian countries race against time to evacuate their citizens stranded in the country. The Sudanese armed forces said that the US and Saudi Arabia mediated the truce. So far, the warring sides have failed to abide by previously reached deals. At least 427 people have been killed amid clashes between Sudan's armed forces and the Rapid Support Forces paramilitary group. The Indian government has launched Operation Kaveri to evacuate around 3,000 Indian citizens stranded in Sudan. Indian Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar said about 500 Indians had reached Port Sudan. He added that the government is working to bring them home in ships and aircraft. The operation was announced at a public event in Kerala. India has also stationed two Super Hercules C-130J aircraft in Jeddah in Saudi Arabia to evacuate its citizens. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov told the United Nations Security Council that Russia tried to stop conflict from occurring in Ukraine. He said Kyiv and its western handlers trampled on an approved agreement to resolve the conflict. Meanwhile, the US ambassador to the UN, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, said Russia invaded Ukraine and struck at the heart of the UN Charter. She added that the action was part of an illegal, unprovoked and unnecessary war. Estonian Prime Minister Kaja Kalas met Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky and signed a joint declaration condemning the Russian invasion. Estonia is a NATO member. Kalas supported Kyiv's call to join NATO. In the joint declaration, the two leaders said they agreed to work together to establish a path that will help bring Ukraine closer to NATO membership. Two explosions took place in a counter-terrorism ammunition depot in northwest Pakistan. 13 people have been killed, while 50 have been injured. The provincial police chief's spokesperson said that ammunition most probably caught fire due to an electric short circuit. So far, there is no evidence of an attack from outside. Most of those killed in the blasts are police counter-terrorism officers. The incident is under investigation. Kenyan President William Ruto has likened the priest at the center of a starvation cult to a terrorist. He has instructed authorities to find the root cause of what exactly happened. He said, and I quote, Terrorists use religion to advance their heinous acts. People like Mr. McKenzie are using religion to do exactly the same. So far, 73 bodies have been recovered in Kenya's starvation cult case. Guatemala's president is on a trip to Taiwan. He pledged his support for what he called the Republic of Taiwan. This comes as Beijing continues to step up pressure on countries that have diplomatic ties with the self-governed island. Honduras recently severed ties with its longtime diplomatic partner Taiwan and sided with China. Chile has buried around 1 million poultry animals as an influenza Avian influenza has spread through farms. This has affected egg prices. The prices of eggs have increased 35% over the last year. Chile has also reported cases of the H5N1 bird flu in wild animals. The country's health authorities have noted that the virus can be transmitted from birds or marine animals to humans. However, there is no known human-to-human -human transmission. People in France sarcastically celebrated President Emmanuel Macron's re-election anniversary. Many people banged pots and pans outside Paris City Hall. This comes amid ongoing anger over Macron's pension reform system. The pension reforms will increase the retirement age in the country from 62 to 64 years. Israel has marked the start of the annual Memorial Day the ceremony was attended by the country's president, Isaac Herzog. Earlier, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu participated in a ceremony at a Jerusalem memorial. The ceremonies will be followed by Independence Day celebrations on Wednesday. This comes as the country continues to face protests against judicial reforms. Former United Nations Chief Ban Ki-moon 
met Myanmar's military junta chief Min, Ong Hia, Min Hon Lang. The junta's information team said that the two leaders openly exchanged views on the latest developments in Myanmar. The meeting comes as diplomatic efforts are on to end the crisis that began with a military coup in February 2021. Min Ong Lang was sanctioned by the United States after the coup took place. Migrants from various Central and South American countries arrived on the banks of the Rio Bravo. The river forms a natural border between Mexico and the United States. Migrants attempted to cross the river to reach the US. They used inflatable air mattresses. This comes a day after migrants marched to Mexico City to protest against detention centers. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro has said that his government will negotiate with the opposition on one condition. That is, if the US government returns Venezuelan assets frozen in the international financial system. Maduro's message was addressed to Colombian President Gustavo Petro and representatives of several countries who will attend a summit in Bogota. The aim is to try to resume talks between the Venezuelan government and the opposition ahead of elections in 2024. Violence has broken out in the streets of Haiti. Locals lynched at least 10 suspected gang members in Port-au-Prince. Police say that the suspected gang members were armed and had been traveling in a vehicle when they were lynched and set on fire. The incident comes days after confrontations between gang members and security agents. Haiti has seen its security situation deteriorate and gangs grow since 2021. Residents of Sumatra in Indonesia began evacuations after a 7.3 magnitude earthquake struck the island. The earthquake triggered tsunami warnings for around two hours. People headed to safe zones with minimal belongings. Indonesia experiences earthquakes frequently as it's located on the so-called Pacific Ring of Fire. This is a seismically active zone where different plates of the Earth's crust meet. India's meteorological department has predicted rainfall and thunderstorms in several Indian states. Many states are likely to get relief from scorching heat. Heat wave conditions in New Delhi will reduce. Heavy rainfall is expected in the states of Meghalaya, Assam and Arunachal Pradesh. A lack of rain in Spain has led to a rise in prices for olive oil to record levels. Olive oil prices have surged almost 60% since June last year. Spain produces about half of the world's olive oil. It is harvested between October and February. It means that if it doesn't rain, there will be poor crop again. Where the forecasters have said not a single drop of rain fell across more than 50% of the country in the first 17 days of April. Indigenous groups from all over Brazil arrived in the capital, Brasilia, they participated in this year's free land camp. Hundreds of people marched demanding land demarcation under the slogan, Indigenous Future is Today. The free land camp was first held in the year 2004. Attendees hope to highlight the importance of demarcation of indigenous land. Jaguars and other wild animals are helping Colombia's Casanare region in focusing on ecotourism instead of fossil fuel. Hato La Aurora is one of the 115 natural reserves in the region. It has over 200 bird species and 66 jaguars. Casanare has reduced its oil dependency significantly. Leaders from European countries surrounding the North Sea have pledged to scale up offshore wind power generation in the region. The aim is, strength, is strengthening energy security. France, Germany, the Netherlands, along with Norway and Britain, have play, pledged to develop what they call energy islands. The aim is to reduce the use of carbon dioxide emitting fossil fuels. US regional lender First Republic Bank has said that it will lay off 20 to 25 percent of its employees in the coming quarter. This comes after the company reported that its deposits plunged by more than $100 billion in the first quarter of 2023. The company is reportedly exploring options to shrink its balance sheets. 
It's also seeking to slash expenses by cutting executives' payments and paring back office spaces. Coinbase Global has filed a lawsuit against the U.S. markets regulator. The crypto exchange has asked the U.S. federal court to compel the regulator to respond to its earlier petition. Coinbase had filed a petition last year. It asked the regulator to provide clarity on the rules for the crypto industry. Pharmaceutical giant Johnson & Johnson has been planning to spin off its consumer health unit, Kenview. It's reportedly seeking a valuation of nearly $43 billion in its initial public offering. Kenview is the company's unit that makes the famous Band-Aid bandages. According to media reports, this is expected to be one of the marquee listings this year. China's Evergrande Group has said that its automobile division will sell two of its businesses. The automobiles division is formerly known as the New Energy Vehicle Group division. The group will record a gain of nearly $4 billion following the sale. This comes as the embattled property developer seeks to restructure the organization. German industrial conglomerate ThyssenKrupp has said that its chief executive officer, Martina Merz, is leaving. Merz had taken over as CEO in 2019. She was instrumental in bringing the company back from the brink of collapse. The contract is being terminated at Merz's request. No reason has been provided for the termination of her contract. Comcast has said that NBC Universal CEO Jeff Schell was fired over sexual harassment. This came after evidence corroborated a female employee's complaint. Earlier, Shell acknowledged that he was stepping down because of an inappropriate relationship with a female co-worker. The complaint was reportedly filed by Hadley Gamble, an anchor for CNBC International. Both CNBC International and NBC Universal are owned by Comcast. Britain has said it will introduce a new law to regulate the power of big tech companies. These rules will stop the tech companies from reducing competition in digital markets. The legislation will also bolster protection for consumers. It will provide more choice and transparency to the consumers. A US appeals court directed Apple to allow developers to provide options for third-party in-app payments. This means users could make direct payments to apps instead of going through the App Store's internal payment system. This would cut down on Apple's sales commissions. The case was first brought by video game maker Epic Games. Epic Games is the company behind the famous video game Fortnite. User reviews for Snapchat's My AI feature is in, and it does not seem impressive. Over the past week, Snapchat's average US App Store review dropped to 1.67. 75% of this was a one-star rating. Reports suggest that Snapchat received around three times more one-star ratings than usual on April 20th. This was the day after the My AI feature was globally released. The European Consumer Organization has expressed concerns about ChatGPT and other artificial intelligence-powered chatbots. It has called on the European Union Consumer Protection Agencies to investigate the technology. The group said that the information provided by these chatbots are often incorrect. It's concerned that this could mislead consumers and result in deceptive advertising. Moving on to sports, in yesterday's IPL match, Delhi Capitals beat Sunrisers Hyderabad by seven runs. The match was played at Hyderabad's Rajiv Gandhi International Stadium. Delhi successfully defended their score of 150 as Hyderabad fell short in the final over of the match. All-rounder Aksar Patel's heroics helped Delhi secure their second straight win. Delhi has made a comeback after suffering five straight losses earlier. Royal Challengers Bangalore stand-in captain Virat Kohli and his team were fined a hefty sum for breaching the code of conduct. Kohli was fined $30,000 while his teammates were fined up to 25% of their respective match fees. Bangalore were fined for having a slow overrate throughout their game. In football, Manchester United have begun talks with striker Harry Kane. 
The Englishman currently plays for Tottenham Hotspur and is not looking to renew his contract with them again. Man United are hoping to place a bid for the striker at the earliest. The Red Devils have also shortlisted Napoli striker Victor Oshimen, but Harry Kane remains their top priority. Tottenham Hotspur has sacked interim coach Christian Stelen Stelenny after the side's humiliating defeat. The Spurs, Spurs were routed 1-6 by Newcastle United, putting their hopes of a top-four finish in jeopardy. Assistant coach Ryan Mason will be taking over as the head coach for Spurs. Atlanta has boosted their chance of returning to the Euro two European competitions. The team handed a crushing 3-1 defeat to AS Roma in the Serie A yesterday. Mario Pal Pasalic, Rafael Toloi and Tion Kopminers scored for Atlanta. Roma striker Lorenzo Pellegrini scored the only goal for Roma. Roma's coach Jose Mourinho blamed the squad's injury woes for the loss. Italian authorities have banned 171 Juventus fans after they were found chanting racist abuses at Romello Lukaku. The fans were identified using video footage from the stadium's cameras. The Inter Milan striker was subjected to racial abuse during the first half of the game against Juventus. Lukaku was sent off in the second half for his post-goal celebration. He celebrated by holding his finger up to his mouth to silence Juventus fans. Cristiano Ronaldo led Al Nasser went down 1-0 to Al Weda in the semi-final of Saudi Arabia's Kings Cup 2023. Al Weda's John David Bouguer scored with a stunning bicycle kick to secure his team's win. After the loss, Ronaldo lost his school at his coaching staff and his bench, drawing flack from fans. A Saudi lawyer has called for the deportation of Ronaldo for his indecent behaviour. In hockey, the Chinese and Pakistani sides have confirmed their participation in the upcoming Asian Champions Tournament in India. The tournament will be held in the Radha Krishnan Stadium in Chennai in the state of Tamil Nadu. Other participating countries will include South Korea, Japan and Malaysia. Hosts India are the defending champions of the Asian Champions Trophy. In basketball, the NBA playoffs are currently underway. The Phoenix Suns, Denver Nuggets and Boston Celtics are each a win away from advancing in the playoffs. The Suns, Nuggets and Celtics lead their respective series 3-1. The Celtics have never lost a playoff series after building a 3-1 lead. They are 27-0 in these situations in their franchise history. In American football, Aaron Rodgers, the star quarterback of Green Bay Packers, has been traded to the New York Jets. The 39-year-old will be ending his 18-year-long tenure with Green Bay. Rodgers has been a four-time MVP at Green Bay and won the NFL Championship Lombardi Trophy for his franchise in 2011. Now over to the world of entertainment. Arnold Schwarzenegger is all set for a movie comeback after a four-year hiatus. He'll star in the action thriller Breakout. The film will mark Schwarzenegger's return to action films after 2019's Terminator Dark Fate. The director of Expendables 4, Scott Waugh, is helming the project. Shooting for the film will begin in Eastern Europe later this year. Brad Pitt is reportedly set to go up against F1 legend Lewis Hamilton in the British Grand Prix while filming his new movie. The actor has apparently gotten permission to compete the, complete the first parade lap at the famous Silverstone circuit in the UK. Hamilton is one of the film's executive producers. It'll see Pitt play an F1 driver who comes out of retirement to mentor an up-and-coming driver. Warner Brothers is gearing up to produce a MotoGP-inspired feature film. The film's script will recreate fictitious races supported by real images of the three World Championship categories. These are the MotoGP, the Moto2 and the Moto3. As per media reports, the film is set to be released in 2025.
the Super Mario Bros. movie continued its spectacular run in North American movie theaters this weekend. This is the film's third weekend running. It beat the weekend's top release, the horror reboot Evil Dead Rise, which saw a solid debut. The Super Mario Bros. movie is expected to pass $1 billion worldwide. The first feature film shot in space, called The Challenge, was released in Russia late last week. The film has already raked in about $5.5 million in the first week of its release. The creators of The Challenge released the Zero Gravity trailer of the film in January this year. A sequence for the film was shot on the International Space Station. Director Klim Shipenko and actor Yulia Pereslil blasted off to the flying laboratory in a Russian Soyuz spacecraft in October last year. Top toy makers Hasbro and Mattel have teamed up for a multi-year licensing for multi-year licensing agreements. They will create co-branded toys and games for their major theatrical releases this summer. Hasbro will create Barbie branded Monopoly games to launch in autumn 2023. Meanwhile, Mattel will produce Transformers branded Uno game set to release later this year. Additionally, the much awaited Transformer branded Hot Wheels vehicles will debut in early 2024. Two new film, uh, films have been added to the competition lineup of the upcoming 76th Cannes Film Festival. They are Sean Penn's starter Black F Flies and Catherine Corsini's Les Retours. As many as 13 movies have been peppered across several sections. This includes the competition, special screenings, uncertain regard and out of competition. This year's festival is set to kick off on May 16th with period movie Jean Toubery starring Johnny Depp. CinemaCon 2023 kicked off in Las Vegas with a taped message from actors Will Smith and Martin Lawrence from the sets of Bad Boys 4. Smith and Lawrence are teaming up once again for Columbia Pictures in movie number 4 of the Bad Boys franchise. What's up CinemaCon, Smith said after he and Lawrence exited a black Porsche against the backdrop of a row of production trailers. CinemaCon 2023 is being held at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas from April 24th to 27th. Netflix is doubling down on South Korea with plans to invest $2.5 billion over the next four years to produce more K-dramas, movies and reality shows. The streaming giant has announced the push following a meeting with, between South Korea's president and a Netflix co-CEO in Washington. The latest news underscores how the entertainment behemoth is becoming more bullish on Korean content, which is being consumed by fans worldwide. Jury selection has begun in a trial for British pop superstar Ed Sheeran. Sheeran. It's, it's over claims that Sheeran owes a share of profits from his hit Thinking Out Loud for copying Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On. The trial is the first of three that Sheeran could face from lawsuits over similarities between the two hits. The lawsuit alleges Sheeran has performed the two songs live as a medley and transitioned seamlessly between them. The trial is expected to last about a week.